G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today I'm going to show you how you can build an adaptive component to achieve a tensile shade with four points in Revit. So it's going to be a little bit, bit of a tutorial in adaptive components, um, but also just with a specific design scenario. So today I'll be looking at this specific design, um, or just a general design like it. So a four point tensile shade. I'm also going to build in the ability that you can also sag and tense up the sides to a distance that you specify, because this is quite a common constraint in these, in these types of designs. Um, in this case, I'm going to be working with what I will, will refer to as option one today, which is doing it all in Revit using an adaptive component. But in option two, which will be a ne the next video, I'm going to be looking at using rhinoceros and kangaroo in order to create an actual draped component um, using rhino inside instead. So a little bit more complicated, um, but a slightly more interesting way to do it. Um, so without further ado, I'm just going to dive straight in to Revit. So this is pretty much what we're aiming for in this tutorial. There's an adaptive component, and in this case it does have tension and also sag related into how it's been built. But I'm going to start from scratch and run you through the process so that you can understand how to build adaptive components. So I'm going to make a new family. And in this case, I'm going to scroll down to the metric generic model adaptive template. Now this looks a little bit different from the standard family editor. We're in the conceptual massing environment instead now, and we're gonna take advantage of this to build a family that's based on points. So in this case, this is gonna be an adaptive family. So it needs four corners. So I'm gonna make four corners, and I'm just clicking anywhere in space. It's not that important. Um, in this case, what really matters is just the fact that they're adaptive. So I'm gonna select them and click this make adaptive. Now in this case, it's just went in the order I created them. So you can see there's a one, two, three, four adaptive relationship between these points. I'm also then just gonna create, uh, in this case, a line between each of them using a spline through points. And for now, I'm just gonna create straight lines. Now, obviously these aren't really what we want. In this case, we're just looking at solid lines um, that are connecting everything in a square. So this isn't really representative of an adaptive shade. I'm gonna select those lines together and I'm gonna click this is reference line. This now converts them into reference lines that won't get consumed when I use them to create geometry. Instead, they'll stay behind. Now I could just take these four lines and select them together and create solid form. To create just a flat, generic, boring shade um, that would just look a little bit like this. And this is essentially a shade with no sag and no tension implied on the edges, just absolute tension, so fully taut, um, which isn't what we want. So I'm gonna go back and I'm now gonna introduce some points instead. So I'm gonna click until I get that highlight in both cases, and I'm gonna put that on all four edges. And these are now hosted to those reference lines. I'm gonna select those four points. And at the moment you can see that they're being measured by what's called a normalized curve parameter. This is a number between zero and one saying how far along its host curve is it placed. If I make this point two, you can say they all start from a relative end of the curve. In this case, I'm just gonna make it 0.5. So they're always halfway along the curve. Now I can create another spline from these. I'm also gonna make this a reference line and I'm gonna make another one crossing the other direction as well. I'm then gonna place a point on one of these two splines. And I'm gonna select the point and then I'm gonna host it by intersection with this curve. So this point will always be at the absolute center of the two center point driven curves from the main component. So now as this all flexes and changes, all those elements will be kept in check by those relationships I've set up. Now from here, we're just mainly doing this to establish the sag point. So I'm gonna to have to take this center point, select it, and I'm gonna change the show reference planes option to always. So when I'm not selecting the element, I can now see its reference planes. Now at the moment, we're gonna to wanna to set this so that we can push a point up or down from this point. So I'm gonna select a reference point. I'm gonna pick the reference I wanna place it on, which in this case is going to be, I believe this, I believe it's this point here, or this, this, uh, this uh, reference of the point. I'll just try it um, because I want to essentially place a point on top of this. And if we did place it on the right plane, it should give us the ability to offset this point. Okay, so now that wasn't the right direction. In this case, we actually need to set it based on this plane. And I should be able to select that point I've just made. 
put in a negative offset. And you can see that it's moving relative to this point, but because it's hosted on that point, as this all moves around, you can see that this point remains relative to the point of the reference plane it was generated from. So I can actually associate a parameter to this offset and just call this sag. So I'll call that sag and I'll make it instance based. And this is essentially gonna control the sagging point of my form. I'm now gonna use this to also generate a control curve. So I'll generate one curve this way and then one curve the other way just by selecting the three points and using the spline through points tool. Notice in this case, I'm generating a spline through three points instead of two. So it's generating me an arc in this case instead or a curved spline. What we need to do now is generate points that represent the pinch point um, to add tension to the edges of the canopy. So I'm gonna again create some points on these curves. So you just have to make sure that they intersect and then they'll become hosted to the curve. And I can now inset these points to generate the tension point of these curves. So in this case, I'm going to set a normalized curve parameter. Um, I'm going to change it instead to a segment length. So let's say I just want to have the tension pulled in by one meter at each pinch point. So again, I'm just going to come to each of these. Now, sometimes you may need to change the segment length from the end instead of the beginning. It depends on where on the curve the point is placed. But in this case, I'm making them relative to each end at either side. In this case, again, segment length, 1000. And here, I'm going to create a segment length from the end. Uh, whoops, I'll just move my project browser this quick. Just take that again. Segment length from the end at a meter. But I can obviously take these four points and I can instead associate this segment length as a parameter. Now, in this case, I'm going to call this parameter tension. And this will allow me to pinch in my canopy at those points. I can now instead generate a new curve through those new points on top of the old one using a spline through points. Now the reason I'm doing this is I'm going to use this curve to generate geometry. So I do need it to be between these points exactly, not between the end points. I'm then going to take, in this case, these three and generate a spline through points. So notice the spline through points tool is very useful. I'm using it a lot here. And from here, I'll turn these into reference lines. And if I select these three curves and I use the create form tool, it's gonna to create a swept blend through these three profiles. In this case, the profiles are lines, so it's gonna generate a solid surface just with a single face. And now I've created a tensile component that will represent my canopy. Now maybe you might want some edges running along the edge of the canopy as well. Well, we can actually nest an adaptive component, a very simple one in this case. Um, so I'm gonna make another new family. Now I might just save this first just to be safe. And I'll just call this shade final. But I'm gonna make another adaptive component using the same template, metric generic model adaptive. In this case, I'm gonna use a three point family. So I'm just gonna click three times, select the points, make adaptive and spline through points. I'll turn on the is reference line command. Now in this case, because they're adaptive points, they'll always show me their reference planes. So what I wanna do now is draw two circles at the start and the end orientated along the sweep. So I'm gonna set my work plane here to this face here of the point. And I'm gonna draw one face and then I'm also going to draw another at the other end, perpendicular. In this case, I'll take my two circles, make them references, and I'm gonna select one of them. And I'm gonna click on this little button here, which will create a radius. I can now add a parameter here called radius on an instance basis. And I can do the same here and just associate that same parameter. I'm just gonna select my profile, my path, and my end profile and create form. And it will create a swept blend along that path in this case. So as these points move around, the adaptive component will track and maintain this change. I'm also just gonna associate a material parameter to this as well. So I'm gonna select the geometry and I'm just gonna call this um, edge and I'll just make this an instance-based parameter. 
And I might just go and reduce my radius to something like uh, 100. I'll then save this component. And I'll just call this rod final. I'm going to load this into my shade family, so not the project, into the shade itself. And I'm going to nest this family. I'm going to make sure that as I place this component, I'm selecting the first adaptive point, the midpoint, and the final adaptive point. And I'm just going around and placing four instances. Now notice as I click on these points, the family will begin to construct itself. This is because the adaptive points are being told to be relative to the points in this family as well. So now as this family flexes and changes, my adaptive rods will also update with this element as well. I can finally just go in and associate a couple of parameters to these rods. So I'll push down a parameter for the radius for the rods on an instance basis. I'll also associate a material parameter for the rods on an instance basis. And finally, I'll also have to select my shade just so I can associate a material parameter to these as well. So I'll just associate this and call this shade. Now I should have control over the material of this as well. But at this point, we're pretty much ready to load this and use it in our project. Now, first of all, I'm just going to get rid of the one that I built before. In this case, I just have some models in place, just four boxes. And just imagine we're draping four points between here to generate a, a tensile canopy. So I'm going to load my shade into the project as a generic model. It now prompts me to select four points. Now I can actually pick vertices. Notice I can pick an endpoint here. And as I click, it should start placing that shade. And there we go. We now have an adaptive tensile shade. And I can go and add uh, various aspects to this, such as more sag. Maybe I want it to really sag. Maybe I also want to add a little bit more tension on the edges. And now we can see the influence that has on the underlying form. So we've now created a fully parametric tensile element. And obviously that you could do this with more pointed elements, say a five point canopy as well. Now it gets a little bit harder each time to generate the underlying form, especially finding that absolute center of the family as well. For a five pointed family, it might be quite difficult, for example, but for a six pointed family, it might not be so challenging. The key is to build at least the right number of adaptive points to support the underlying geometry of the shade itself. So for example, we have four adaptive points in this family. But I hope that this is a useful little example of how you can work with adaptive components and also work with normalized and segment length curve parameters in order to generate quite an intelligent component. But I look forward to showing you um, in the next video how you can actually do this in another way using a physics simulator, in this case, a kangaroo for Rhino, uh, Rhino 3D, using Rhino inside, inside Revit. But in this case, that's all for this tutorial. Um, so hopefully you found this useful. Um, the files for this will be on my GitHub as always, um, including the families that I built as well. Um, if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. I try to make videos two times a week um, and I look forward to sharing other similar topics in future. So I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Thanks, take care, bye.